Peep it. Got a package all the way from Australia from my good friends Glenn and Sue Casey. Bassman spinner baits. If you'll see here, Glenn gave me my first Bassman spinner bait a year and a half, two years ago. Um, almost as kind of a gag, right? But as soon as I saw it, I, I had dreams of catching a big muskie on it. And on Leech Lake about a week and a half ago, I actually had one strike this thing, but it struck the blade and ripped it right off. <laughs> So I told Glenn about it and uh, super bummed because, you know, just didn't really run true anymore. Sent me another little package here of baits I ordered. <laughs> oh man. Boom, some replacement blades. <laughs> got a rep, got a rep. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that thing. Check it out, Cove. That's beautiful. You've got more musky experience than all of us. What do you think about that thing? They're gonna get it done? Yeah, heck yeah. The cool part about this bait is, you know, the difference with the heavy, heavy, heavy head that you don't get on a lot of big spinner baits, big profile spinner baits, and that willow blade, you'll be able to burn this thing really nicely, but still keep it down in the column a little mm -hmm. bit and get those fish that aren't as willing to come up high. That's awesome. Because they like speed, huh? Cool. Yeah, that's definitely a factor in triggering some of the bites for a lot of these fish when they're finicky. It definitely can make a difference. Now the question is, do they like Halloween? Oh, 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 oh dude, there you go. Look at this bad boy. Look at that. It's like a chandelier up there. That's crazy. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. I've never seen such a concoction. That is cool. You think Musty will bite that? Mm-hmm, absolutely. That black and orange color is one of my favorites. Really? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, one of my uh, favorites. we fish black and orange plastics back at home. Really? The color's called Halloween. Halloween, okay, black really. Top, Gold sides, orange belly. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. And um, it, mm -hmm. I don't think they throw it very much anymore. I haven't seen anybody throwing it. Um, yeah. We're bringing back Halloween. bringing back Halloween, man. It's perfect in time for October, you know? Look at the blades in the thing. Nice girl, man. The amount of flash and yeah. thump and when I'm thump. winding yeah. this thing, and you can hear the blades make contact. Black on each other. Go on, go on, go on. That's impressive. That's gnarly. That is impressive. The vibration that they put Look out. Look at the components, so. Mm hmm. That wire. The wire's is really well built. Super it's well built. Like that. Like bending and twisting. Yeah, that's awesome. Now that's spinnerbait, boys. Oh, yeah. More darkness. Pure black. They like black, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Straight black is a good one, a real good one. Whether it be St. Clair or up north, it can be, it can be awesome. It's good stuff. Look at that. The vibration this blades by putting the water is probably ridiculous. <laughs> Just keep spinning and spinning. No wonder he hit the blade. <laughs> Jeez. Look at that. Just keeps going. <laughs> the backup. The backup for the OG. See, like, this is what the blades looked like when he first gave it to me. And that's what the blade looks like after actually fishing it for a while. So, you can see that a little better. You can see how, how destroyed it is. And that's a result of the blades hitting each other. Dinging on the bait. Teeth marks, yep. all kinds of good stuff. Maybe not teeth marks so much, but hitting at each other for sure. That's cool. <laughs> So sick. <laughs> oh, more replacement blades. We're back in business. Mm -hmm. Hey! The Australian newspaper? I've never read the, 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 Oz, the Aussie paper before. Check that out. Belina, Sunsh Belina Shire Advocate. Read that in your best uh, Australian accent, Kobe. I don't. I, Australian. What's the matter? You don't read English? Yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to trying to Belina Shire Advocate. Belina Shire Advocate. Play of the beaches. There you go. Collins Hume is the business of the year. <laughs> I apologize to all my Australian friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the butchering that just in damn. 
Did you hear the Chinese accents? I feel oh, the same way. It's even better. Oh man. Alright, well. Since, uh, <coughs> since we're on the musky trip, <laughs> we actually made a stop at a musky shop in Wisconsin, right? Mm -hmm. Had to get a bag of goodies. Well, thanks. So we went through, I think, three liters that day. Mm -hmm. So instead of buying some pre mades, found myself a bag of fluorocarbon leader. We're gonna rig your own. 130 pounds. 130 pounds. You think that's sufficient? You should be solid. Oh, no. What else do we have good. in this unbagging? Bags of bags. Can we get some hardware? Oh, some hardware. Some crimps. Gonna mess with some custom baits later. Oh! Crimps. crimps. For the 130 pound crane swivels, and then we got 90 pound wire crimps for the 90 pound wire. Ooh, some mm -hmm. more placement blades, big Indianas, big chartreuse Indianas. Those would be awesome. Depending on the water clarity. Oh, mm -hmm. look at that. <laughs> what do they call this blade? Willow. Oh, wait, these are willows. Mm -hmm. They look like a gnarly shape at first. Big old willow. Big old willow leaves. Got that doe chartreuse. Look how sick yeah, that is. Crazy. The funny part is, this is as big as most of the baits that bass guys do. Yeah, right? <laughs> and that's just if the you Put a treble hook on that and a split would be like, oh, just a kind spoon. Of a big spoon. <laughs> yeah. It's a genius spoon. In all perspectives. Alright. Got some gold leaf willow blades. Boom. Big musky treble hooks. Big suckers. I think we should probably rig some of this stuff up, man. What do you think? We could get a rig and rock and ready to catch a couple fish. Awesome. Let's do it. Alright, check it out. We got a bucktail spinner my buddy Troy Lindner gave us. Uh, it's rigged on a pre tied heavy fluorocarbon leader. And although I'm new to musky fishing, I'm not new to like big heavy hardware because of my saltwater background. So there's a couple things I didn't like about these pre-made leaders um, that I saw in these musky shops. Number one, the, the cross lock snaps they use, and they're kind of awkward, clunky. Uh, if you take a look here, um, that was actually a lot easier to take off than the two or three other ones that we were using. Uh, so that was the first thing I didn't like, was the style of snap they're using. Um, and then this big, giant, clunky swivel um, on the front end of this, I felt was a little unnecessary. Uh, you know, it just made things a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more hardware than I than I liked. So instead of buying more of these pre-made leaders, uh, I figured we just get the components and rig them up ourselves. Uh, spent a lot of years rigging, you know, big tuna and marlin feathers and stuff for people back at home so it's really the same deal so what we have here is 130 pound fluorocarbon and i really like fluorocarbon as a leader for a couple of reasons uh you know you got the same refractive index as water so its visibility is supposed to be pretty low but most importantly especially with the, the toothy species like a muskie its abrasion resistance is very high uh, and you know, you see how how stiff this leader is, makes it a great leader material because that's also going to keep the bait from fouling on itself as much when you're casting. Uh, you know, you have less time, you know, where your bait's all just jacked up from rolling and tumbling on the cast, and uh, it just makes you a little bit more efficient. So, what we have here is the 130 pound fluoro. We've got the proper size crimps here. Uh, I've never used these crimps before, but 
they all pretty much function the same way. So you're going to need a crimp on each end. These are double barrel crimps here. If you take a close look at them. And you pass it right through the other. Pretty simple. Boom. So, you get that ready. Grab yourself a big crane swivel here. These are rated at 220 pound. So they should be plenty strong. Even if we're not fishing any drag. Okay, so you wanna put your, first you wanna thread your sleeve on, then your barrel swivel. Here's a little trick we learned from rigging tuna feathers and marlin feathers back at home. We're going to take a lighter and burn the end of the fluorocarbon leader to create a bit of a bulb on there. Let's see, let's get it a little bigger. Try not to breathe that in because it's probably not good for your health. So what that does is that creates a fat bulb on the end of that tag end. And now it's going to be pretty much impossible to pull it through the crimp, even without crimping it. So it's another little measure of security mm -hmm. there. So we're going to cinch it down pretty tight here. About right there, looks good. You want to take your high quality swedging tool and just crimp it pretty gently with the fluoro. You really don't want to damage the leaf material. It's a little bit different than crimping wire, where you can just really get in there. But yeah, boom, it's that simple. So that's one end of your leader here. And one of the things I didn't like about some of the stock leaders was this one's okay because it's shorter. Like some of them are like 18 inches, and it just made it a little bit more cumbersome when you're casting these big giant baits. So we're going to kind of keep around that 8 to 10 inch length, but you want to give yourself enough room to work with here. So snip off 12 to 15 inches of your leader line. And instead of those clunky uh, cross snaps that those guys are using, we're going to use one of the snaps that we typically fish for those big swim baits for largemouth. It's a number 5 decoy egg snap. It's rated at 120 pound. And we fish it successfully with, you know, big saltwater species like yellowtail without them opening up. So feel pretty good about them fishing for muskie. Take another crimp, same process. Pass it through once, back through the other end. We're gonna employ the same burnt tag end technique. Try not to breathe. Make sure that's cold. Draw that down kind of tight. Once again, hit it with the swedger tool. Nice even pressure. That should be sufficient. I didn't crimp it all the way down. So you take a close look at that. That's what the finished product looks like. But you know, instead of spending, what, seven to 10 bucks? At least, yeah. Uh, on a pre-made leader, uh, we can make a whole lot of these. And not worry about losing them because we were only had like two each mm -hmm. that day or something. Mm -hmm. A little bit more cost efficient, a little bit smaller profile with the snap that I'm mm -hmm. comfortable using. And the beauty of these snaps is now you can quick change in between 
You go from a big glide bait like size slide. It's musky ready. Okay. You just switch it up again. You can just as quickly put on a Bassman spinner bait. And not have to worry about getting bit off. Yeah.